say that how pleased I am also to see Lord Ahmed in his uh, position uh, after the reshuffle. Uh, my Lords, it was a pleasure listening to the first humble address of His Majesty King Charles III. This year, the Royal Humble Address coincides with the Remembrance Week that reminds of us all of sacrifices of those who gave their lives for our safe future, leaving their own families and loved ones to face the hard reality of post-war devastation, hardships and insecurity. Well, was my own family who lived in the state of Jammu and Kashmir was among those who suffered the human loss, hardship and misery of the Second World War. My late father was 15 when the war began and his newly wed elder brother, Allah Ditta, joined the British Army to defend the crown. Allah Ditta was the only breadwinner for the family of 10. In 1941, the family received the last letter from my uncle, sent from the post of Karachi, saying that he was about to go on a mission and will write again soon. But instead of that, from 1942, the army uh, periodically wrote to his wife asking if she has heard from him or knows his, about his whereabouts, as he had gone missing. This added to the agony and pain on the family, leaving my father to take the financial burden and the responsibility of their well-being. Lack of insufficient income and medical care and the spread of smallpox um, epidemics in the area resulted in hunger, malnutrition and death of two of his younger brothers and whilst Uncle Tita's wife was blinded by smallpox. Finally, the war ended. When the war ended, our family was informed by British Army that they can now <coughs> confirm that in 1941, a group of British soldiers, including Aladita, were ambushed by the Japanese forces during a patrol duty in the state of Rakhine in Burma. The army did not know about the incident or the whereabouts of the missing soldiers until the close to the end of the war in 1945 when a rescue operation was conducted for the release of these prisoners. Sadly, my uncle Aladita had died during the rescue operation. The news came as a bombshell to the family, leaving his mother, his blind wife, and the rest of the family in a shock and trauma that left scars in their memories for the rest of their lives. Six, 56 years later, my lords, in 2001, we came to know through research done by my brother that my uncle was remembered on a panel in the Commonwealth War Graves in Rangoon, Burma. <coughs> that year, I accompanied my father and visited the memorial in Rangoon, which, pro which provided the long overdue closure that my father was yearning for. After the war, my family witnessed the partition of India, the war in Kashmir in 1948-49, the India-Pakistan wars of 65 and, 60, uh, and 71, the continuous oppression and uh, human loss in Indian uh, held Kashmir and right up to now, wars in Iraq, Libya, Syria, Afghanistan, um, Ukraine have caused, have caused huge human disaster, killing millions of people. Having watched wars, bloodshed, and human sufferings so closely makes me a stronger advocate for peace. As we speak, the war in Gaza and Israel has become one of the deadliest wars of our lifetime. Following the terrorist attacks by Hamas on 7th of October, hundreds of people, including women and children, are getting killed in residential blocks, schools, mosques, churches, and hospitals, and even water medicine and fuel are not allowed in Gaza by Israel. This is human catastrophe and is against the international law. This is happening when the world leaders are playing with words. I strongly believe that there is no military solution to the Palestine-Israel conflict. I believe the current situation in Gaza and Israel requires an immediate ceasefire to address the humanitarian catastrophe. The call for a ceasefire is backed by multiple UN agencies, nearly 700 NGOs globally, Pope Francis, 
the Archbishop of Canterbury, more than 250 British lawyers, including eminent Jewish lawyers, 150 countries that voted for the favor of UN, uh, uh, um, in favor of the UN General Assembly motion, and 76% of the British public. A ceasefire should not be end, uh, should not be the end uh, goal in itself, but a chance to end the violence, ensuring unfettered human, humanitarian assistance, and get the hostages released and begin the process for a new political reality for Palestine.